Hey yo, what is good everybody? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of a follow-up on my two win build videos and this time it's going to be a win based team based on more or less those videos uh, building the perfect win team but of course if you have improvements or adjustments let me know in the comments below. My perfect win team or physical is going to be Sephiroth with his Dark Harbinger costume and Dark Heavens Yuffie with her skater costume and Dana tray, and Aerith with her most recent costume and weapon, the Floral Wand. So the idea of this build is to have Aerith use Floral Flare, which is going to reduce the enemy's physical defense by mid potency and their wind resist by low potency for multiple casts of that and you can have both physical defense and wind resist down to mid potency. Then Sephiroth and Yuffie are going to take advantage of that with 800% and 850% physical wind damage with boost physical attack level 7 each giving them 100 more physical attack and 50% boost and boost wind potency level 8 which is 100% extra wind ability damage. Of course with their outfits Sephiroth will be doing 120% wind ability damage and Yuffie will be doing a whopping 135% wind ability damage. And because it's physical and wind, both of that is going to be taking advantage of Aerith's debuff. So you will be hitting like a truck for wind damage with this team. Now most teams normally have a DPS, a support and a healer. This team's a little different, it's got two DPSs and a healer and the support role is split between the healer and one of the DPSs, in this case Yuffie, for some of the builds. So your healer is your most flexible role for all of these builds. Um, not that flexible though, because you need it to be Aerith, and she has to have the Floral Wand equipped in her main hand or her off hand. That is pretty much the only requirement so that you can make use of her command ability to lower their physical defense and wind resistance. The rest of the build is entirely up to you. You can go for boost HP, boost heal, boost magic attack, whatever you want. Go for it. In my case, I went with Fairy Tail in the main hand for AoE heals and Floral Wand in the off hand for the command ability. For sub weapons, I went with uh, Tifa's Tiger Fangs, her own Sun Umbrella, and Red's Canyon Collar. That gave me boost heal level 4 with the heal outfit, boost magic attack level 7, earth resistance level 5. Attack level 4, Wind Potency 5, Magic Ability Potency level 3, and Crit level 3. So for the DPS, that is a lot more strict. If you want to have these builds in this scene, you need to follow these builds. And if you have any differences, let me know. The first one is sacrificing an R ability for Sephiroth, and it looks like this. Claire Reed in his main hand, Dark Heavens in his offhand, and his sub weapons are going to be Magic Shuriken, Apocalypse, and Motor Drive from Yuffie Cloud and Tifa, respectively. That is going to give him boost physical attack level 7, boost wind potency level 8, boost limit break potency level 6, boost attack level 5, and HP level 2 from his outfit. Most of these builds will have boost physical attack level 7 and wind potency level 8. And of course, all of the builds are based on level 90. OB-10 weapons. So Yuffie is the final member of this team and she's going to have her Dyna Tray and Arctic Star in her main, hand, main weapons and her sub weapons are going to be Aerith's Prism Rod, Lucia's Pulse Gun and her own 4 point Shuriken. So she's going to have the same, use physical attack maxed out and wind potency at the sweet spot level 8. She's going to have boost HP level 5 which is also a sweet spot by the way and boost attack level 4. Finally, she has buff debuff extension level 5, giving her that 150% effect duration on her buffs and debuffs. So this is what the final build will look like. Your healer will be whatever you make it, and Yuffie and Sephiroth will have max boost physical attack, level 8 boost wind, some attack, some HP, and Yuffie will have the buff debuff effect duration, and Sephiroth will have the limit break potency. Selling points of this build is Sephiroth's uh, Limit Break, the Astral Gate, who will be doing quite a lot of damage with the 70% extra Limit Break damage. 
And then the other selling point is Yuffie's Arctic Star, which is an amazing weapon and I'm super sad I have not been able to pull for it because it gives uh, instant high potency physical attack to an ally and mid potency to Yuffie. So if you cast it on both of your allies, then your whole party will have physical attack buff of high potency. And of course, the build comes with the level 5 buff debuff effect duration, so those buffs will last a lot longer. The downside is the motor drive on Sephiroth. He needs it for the boost wind potency to reach level 8, but the boost physical attack on it is a dead R ability because he already has level 7 without it. The second variation of DPS, so the second build, will be sacrificing Sephiroth's limit break potency. So this time he's going to have Dark Heavens and Shinra Blade. He's also rocking Zack's Falchion, Yuffie's Magic Shuriken and Barret's Heavy Hauser. And if you know these weapons, you'll know it is an boost ability potency kind of build. So there it is, he attack 7, wind 8, boost ability potency level 5, boost attack level 7 and boost HP level 2. So he has more of a hybrid build, he gets extra physical attack from both boost attack and extra physical ability damage from ability potency, but can also take advantage of magic. Yuffie on the other hand, her build for this one is staying the same, so not much to see here, same as the first build, which in my opinion is a very good build. Yeah, not much else to say. These are the differences. Sephiroth gains boost attack, and that maxes out, but he loses, uh, not loses, he exchanges boost limit break potency for boost ability potency. So the selling points of this build is that Sephiroth gets boost attack level 7, that gives him a bit more physical attack, and also gives him the ability to make better use of magical materia. Then Yuffie's Arctic Star, of course, once again, is amazing with the effect duration plus 150%. You can have your allies' physical attack at high potency for most of the fight. The downside, if you want to call it that, is dropping the boost limit break potency level 6 on Sephiroth for boost ability potency level 5. Finally, DPS Variation 3 sacrifices the Arctic Shuriken on Yuffie. The so Sephiroth once again goes back to having Clear Reed and Dark Heavens, and this time it also swaps HP between Sephiroth and Yuffie from the first bowl. So he gets Pulse Gun, Apocalypse, and Prism Rod from Aerith this time. So where there is the R abilities, so where uh, Yuffie is a bit more durable in the first build. Sephiroth is more durable in this build. Yuffie in this build is more of a glass cannon. She has Dynatray and she drops Arctic Shuriken for Magic Shuriken. She has Tifa's Motor Drive, Barrett's Enemy Launcher and Glenn's Ultimatic. That gives her the usual physical attack and wind boosts, except this time she gets boost attack max start level 7, and she gets boost physical ability potency level 5. So when your attack stance is maxed out, you will get 60% extra physical ability damage with Yuffie. So that command ability is going to be doing like 910%. So here you go, Yuffie loses the HP, Sephiroth gains the HP, Yuffie gets boost attack and physical ability potency level 5. Sephiroth loses some attack, but he gets his limit break potency back. So the selling points of this build are once again Sephiroth's limit break damage, and this time a bit more durability for him. Yuffie on the other hand gets more physical attack percentage from boost attack, and she gets access to AoE wind ability with the magic shuriken as her secondary weapon. Then of course she gets that 60% physical ability damage, 
making her Dana Trey command ability hit like an absolute truck. But she also is a glass cannon, and yeah, so she'll be doing 910% if my maths is correct with her command ability from Dana Trey. So it, the big downside of this build, and I think it really is a big downside, is that there's no Arctic Shuriken. So you don't get the epic buff for both Yuffie and party member. And in my opinion, that is quite a big deal because that build has effect duration as well. The other build differences. The first build, Yuffie has attack 4, HP 5, buff debuff 5, and the Arctic Star C ability. Sephiroth has attack 5, limit break 6, and HP 2. In the second build, Yuffie has exactly the same, so Sephiroth gets a bit more attack, he loses limit break 6 for ability potency 5, and HP is the same. For the final build, Yuffie gets boost attack max at 7, and physical ability potency 5, but she loses the HP and there's no Arctic Star command ability, so she's no longer a support in that build. Sephiroth gets his limit break potency back, he gets durability with Four levels of HP boost and you get attack 5. So you need to decide what you want to go with but in my opinion my preference is going to be the first build because I prefer limit break potency on Sephiroth over ability potency and attack and the motor drive downside can always be swapped out later so you can get a weapon with wind potency but something else useful rather than physical attack. And then, of course, the main reason is that Arctic Shuriken, in my opinion, is just too good, even though I don't even have it. Uh, yeah, two casts of it gives your whole team high potency physical attack buff with 150% duration on the effect, so it lasts that much longer. That is pretty much it. Let me know what you think, and see ya!